Okay, you too. I have a few tickets here. Um, three of the tripling play and then um, one of the extreme crosswords. Um, so let's try them out. We got them in Lodi, uh, one of the quick stops, I believe. And it's book six. Ticket 215 so far. And he shoots you in the back of the head. 2,500. <laughs> it, it's, uh, I just stood up and. Why are you there? Well, what, what did they tell you? What did, the, what, what did they tell you at the hospital? What did the doctor tell you? They all did that same thing. They just kind of looked at me and go, kid, I, I don't know what they say. I mean, did they, they had to remove the bullet off it. Yeah. Uh, mm. See, what he was aiming for was what's, it's a, it's a famous uh, mobster hit shot. He actually used a, a 25, which is okay. designed for not, not a real stout round. It had just enough powder to go into the skull, but not out the front, so it's really clean and really okay. easy to not make a mess. And um, if you see where the mark was, he was aiming for the base of the skull so that can go in and sever the spinal cord, which is just a clean, just a kill, but um, he, was a, he was an inch or two off, and so it, it actually hit like the thickest part of the skull, one of the thickest parts. So he shoots you again. Yeah, he, uh, he wrapped off a few more shots, and uh, 
the front three casings in there. Um, yeah, I've, got, I've got two bullets. One is one I'm still carrying. I'm kind of tired now. <laughs> Why did he want 36, you to do it? 35. You know, that's, that's really what I wanted to ask you. I, I cannot. 31. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. 37. I, I assume he wanted you out of the way. Uh, 22. I guess. 29. They lure you into what's clearly a killing chamber. That, that's what all of this plastic is for, that they've got draped around as the research started coming out, I found out that they put so much planning into this that it was, it's like the stuff you see in Hollywood, but actually, actually happens. They dug a, they dug a, a big hole, actually big enough to bury the car. They were going to, uh, they thought about actually just throwing the whole vehicle in there. Did you know at the time that he had had a criminal history? That was the, the difficult part. The, the family had actually told me that something happened 25 years ago, but what they told me was him and his wife got in a scuffle. She fell into the sink, and I, I didn't have a reason not to believe that. It sounded reasonable to me, and I come to find out that wasn't even. Okay, so it looks like all three of these were not winners, but I was scanning. Not, this was not a, just to check, but this doesn't look like there was three matches, so. I mean, there was so much bruising up and down all over the body. And so much blood splatter in the house. They went, you know, those UV lights, they go and try to scan the wall. They had a hand print from this woman that went down the front door. And she was trying to. So he beat his wife. And he went to prison for it. Served time. And wrapped her up, disposed of the body, got out of prison eventually, then shot you in the head. Planned on wrapping you in plastic, burying you. Now he's in prison for that. Now you're here for a reason because you face a new challenge. We're going to talk about that when we come back. His in laws are behind bars for plotting to kill him. But he says that didn't stop them from trying again. Plus, why does Ramon believe his son might actually be in danger now? Talk about all that. It's hard for me to believe that he'd actually shot me. I poured my heart and soul into the woman, and I feel like this is the ultimate act of betrayal. Well, that was Ramon, whose bitter custody battle with his ex-wife led to her parents trying to kill him. And Ramon just narrowly escaped with his life. Now, after his in-laws were convicted and okay. sent to prison for trying to murder him, uh, so he thought he was finally safe, right? They're in prison. Well, he says he couldn't have been wrong. Between the time that the shooting happened and the trial, somebody had come up to my house in the middle of the night where I was staying, and they had unscrewed the gas cap and stuck rags in there and lit them on fire. It looked to me like they had attempted to blow up the vehicle and the house by proxy because it was so close. Do you have any idea who did that, who was involved? Well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to muddy up a, a prosecution by giving you some details. Well, but they, they do have a. They do have a suspect. Don't answer anything. But I, I don't want you to run any red lights here, because I don't want to jeopardize anything. But you have an idea who was involved, and do you think it's associated with your in-laws in some way? Can you answer that? I. Yes. It's very clearly associated with my in-laws. Uh, joining us is Deputy District Attorney uh, for the county, uh, Michael Dugan, and he prosecuted the case against Erlene and Lester uh, Reger. Am I pronouncing that right, Reger? Reger? Uh, so, uh, Michael, thank you so much for being here. Uh, at, at this point, uh, what kind of time are, are these folks doing? I assume they're gone for a long time. Well, uh, Earl Rigger was convicted of attempted aggravated murder and conspiracy to commit aggravated murder because he had a prior homicide conviction. He's doing 130 months in prison in Oregon at the mandatory minimum sentence. He got 10 months added to the 120 for his felony in possession of a firearm. Uh, Earl is only doing 90 months. Not yet. Hey, 
I did these, but no winner. I'm doing it. Right, w and K. I assume they pled not guilty. Uh, they absolutely did plead not guilty. They had trial. What well, well, was the defense? Well, <clears throat> for Lee, uh, her defense was, I didn't do it. I didn't know anything about it. Not me. I mean, all her own. Uh, Earl's defense was even weirder. Um, in that death chamber garage, there was a co-conspirator, uh, John Fripp. And he testified for the state. And he testified just as Ramon said. But Earl's defense was, I'm a hero. Ramon came at me with a gun. I disarmed him and shot him. And that's what I did. So he says he had, so Ramon attacked him with a gun. That's what he said. Did, did Charlene testify? Charlene did not testify. Right. When you were in the hospital, did she come see you? Oh, and uh, no. You asked uh, Ramon why they did this, and my perspective is this. Erlene got a divorce from her first husband. He was in the Navy, four was deployed, he had two children. Uh, when he'd come back to visit, she was a uh, terror and wouldn't let him do it. He had to go to court. And his, her lawyer finally convinced her that he'll go away. Just let him have visitation. I know these people, he'll go away. And eventually he did. That same lawyer represented Shailene. And they pulled that family again. Ramon will go away. Just Ramon will go away. Quit making these false police reports. Quit doing this. He'll go away. Ramon wouldn't. He wanted to be a father. He wanted to be a father to his son. He was proud of, of having that. And that lawyer created such a, a devastating uh, divorce decree. He had to bring the child home at a certain time. If he's 15 minutes late, he couldn't get the visitation the next time. If he showed up 15 minutes early, he couldn't get the visitation. He had to park on the street. He couldn't park in their driveway. Um, he had to tell them what adults would be present wherever he went. If he didn't tell them that, uh, these people would call the police and have the police go and try to arrest him. It was horrible. Take a break. Next, his ex-wife's parents insisted to kill him in cold blood, but she still has custody of her son. Why does Ramon believe his son might be in danger? Since the shooting, I don't want to call it paranoid, but I have experienced certain ticks. I really don't like when people stand over me now. I, if someone stands behind me, I'm always looking over my shoulder. When I'm in a classroom, I always have to sit to the rear. I can't sit up in the front. I can't leave a drink unattended in a room because somebody's going to poison it when I walk out. And I know it's not real, but it still kind of registers back there in the back of my mind. So the shooting ended the turmoil with Shalane's parents, but the custody over our son has not changed. It's more bitter and more emotionally charged since that day. She had absolutely no empathy. She still is trying to keep me out of my son's life. Well, Ramon survived being shot twice in an execution-style plot concocted and carried out by his wife's parents. You're fighting for custody now to, for your right to see the son. And uh, we invited your ex-wife to come to the show. She invited contact with her attorney. And he declined on behalf of his client, uh, but he did send a letter. As part of the letter, um, there is a statement. Like most lawyers, I would rather try my client's case in court with a court experienced and highly qualified judge rather than on television. There has been quite enough of that already. The party's two and a half year old son is entitled. Rather than seeking publicity at every opportunity, Mr. Fry would find it in the best interest of all concerned if he were to obtain full time employment and keep it rather than multiple part time, short term jobs. Establish and maintain a state at home rather than bouncing around as he has. Make meaningful progress on his post high school education very hit and miss curriculum which he has been pursuing. Regularly pay and meager child support rather than finding excuses not to pay and in good faith obey court orders rather than assuming court orders apply only to others. What do you think about what he had to say? None of this is even true. I mean, 
meaningful progress on his post high school education. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in college right now. I'm registered to another school to take an EMT course so that I can become a paramedic. I was just sitting here wondering if maybe he forgot he got shot in the head. That's, that's another thing. I had it in my mind that she was going to be indicted. You know, I, I was preparing to take custody of my son. And disobeying court orders, I, I failed to see where what he's... Well, he actually gave us a number and said you should call the court and check this out because he's in contempt of two court orders. And, and we, we actually did that. We, we called the court and they said that you needed to uh, provide some medical records that you had provided yet. And that was what you were in violation of, that you need to bring him some papers. Okay. So, so uh, yeah. I want to be very clear. Um, she was not charged with anything, right? She was not. There's no evidence of any wrongdoing on her part sufficient to bring charges, so certainly don't want to suggest that there is. Now, Shalane still has full custody of Malone Jr., so we asked uh, a, a friend to the show here, and I sometimes argue until hell wouldn't have it, but I have great respect uh, for this gentleman. His name is Mel Fight. Uh, he is founder of the National Center uh, for Men. The National Center for Men. I asked him to join us. So, uh, via satellite, Mel is here. Mel, how you doing? Doing great. Mel, you've been listening. What do you have to say to Ramon here? Um, you know, I think if someone shoots you in the head and you survive, um, and then you have the courage to continue to fight for your child. At that point, from that point forward, you should enjoy a very strong presumption that you will be a great dad. And it should take an awful lot of evidence to overcome that presumption. I, I do not understand for the life of me why, at the very least, this man is not having shared parenting, joint physical custody. Ramon, the, the, the key to success here, you have to do two things. First, you have to stay focused when you talk to the judge. Everything that you Thank say you to the court from now on is that your dad fighting for your child, and that's all that matters. The other thing you have to do is that's be persistent. And then over here we have Persistence it. pays off here. A lot of men go into family courts. And they mistakenly believe that the obstacles cannot be overcome. Huh? And I am here to tell you that they can be have... overcome. That the truth will ultimately prevail. So stay Zero. focused and be persistent. Mm. Those who hang in and persist are the ones that win out. Don't be the one that goes away. Hang in. Show up for the hearings. Meet the requirements. Just continue to put one foot in front of the other. And when they realize you ain't going away, then pretty soon you do win out. Correct, Mel? So you too. Have a good day. Have a good night, actually. And, focus, focus, and see you in the next video. If she were here and if uh, 